Right, so my special guest tonight is um, the booted legend that is 2TUK, Stuart. Hi. <laughs> Hey Dave, um, not sure about the booting legend, more like a just looking, looking bastard maybe. Uh, You're the guy I always come to when I find things. I'm thinking, well, I'm sure Tutti, or he must have had it somewhere. So I'll go and have a look through his videos. Poss- well, I-, I think you'll find that for most people, especially nowadays. Are you suffering from cold turkey at the minute then, with them not being on or the charity shops being shut as well? Yeah, I think it's more the charity shops because yeah. the car boots are always like a, a, a nicety. But you know, if if you're a booter yourself, and maybe people that are watching that might go to the car boots, they're not what they used to be. No, um, especially not not for the retro people. That's all I sort of say. You know, people that are into the sort of I would say last gen, but it's two gens ago now. The three sixty PS three, they'd be have a field day now because <laughs> yeah. they're like a pound again. You know, but. For us all, us all gets it's it, it, it's just a, a morning out, and it it's get some exercise, having a nose about. It, you might find a bargain. Yeah. That's how I look at it now. But yeah, the charity shops are quite nice as well because it gives you a bit of purpose on a, you know of, of a Saturday or whatever. Have a mooch about again, stretch your legs. There's no reason to, to do anything now, is there? That's the problem. <laughs> exactly, and, it, and you hit the nail on the head. I say to me, missus, it's not. I don't expect to find a, um, Commodore game system or whatever you know the, the console ones the gf the, yeah. The GF4, yeah that'd be not i wouldn't mind one of them just just to have i wouldn't play it but i don't play anything but the, the, the problem is it's like you say you can get a million copies of fifa or um playstation 3 or wii stuff there's loads of wii stuff about it as well but... yeah yeah some, sometimes the wii stuff's all right it, it's it, you know there's a lot of shovelware i think there's a lot of shovelware in most of them but the wii was you know really prevalent um, but some of it's all right for CEX credit, so yeah. you kind of have to play the game a little bit if that's your bag. If you're going there to buy stuff for your collection, mm. fair play to you. Um, but again, if you're a retro collector, I think it's going to be slim pickings. Yeah, definitely. It, it's interesting. I don't know if you noticed, but the Wii prices seemed to rock it up during lockdown. I don't know why that was, If just because people were after Wiis or what. I think, yeah... Um, I can't remember who spoke to you about this. Someone else asked me about this. Um, because when, it, it was especially with the Wii Fit, when they stopped the whole exercising thing um, and they closed all the gyms and everything else, everyone just obviously were looking for alternatives. And, and again, I'm pretty sure you've seen this as well. You, you know, two years ago, three years ago, you, you'd be tripping over Wii Fit boards. <laughs> People tried to give you away. You wouldn't. The things weigh a fucking ton. You don't want to lug them up. <laughs> no one wanted them. Yeah. And then they were selling for 40, 50, 60, 70, 90, especially on Amazon. They were going for a dip. I know like, some of the guys that sell on Amazon. And they, they, they would buy them off you for 50 quid to sell them for like 90 on Amazon. That's insane. But the, like, I, I can't remember what to speak to. It might have been Tom, uh, Pizarro's Pieces. And I said to him, the problem is these people that have bought these systems and these games ex- at that price... When they come to the car boot now, when when and if things go back to normal, they're going to be, I'll pay 50 quid for that. <laughs> yeah. Cheryl, you ain't getting a fiver for it, let alone 50 quid. Yeah. You know, and that's there, there's going to be a, an absolute deluge of just Wii Fit boards and Wii systems that people are going to be asking stupid money for. Uh, yeah, because I know what you mean, because I've bought Wiis from there before, like when I've just wanted the system to like flash, just to play emulators mm. on. And I've always said, oh no, you can keep the board because it weighs a ton. I'm not carrying it around yeah. the boot with me. <laughs> yeah, like, no, one want, no one wanted them. No one's interested. But yeah. they were selling for like 90, 70, 80 quid that's on Amazon, admittedly. But yeah. It, it, it's... Um... It's funny you say that about people saying I paid 50 quid as well because that's something else that really gets on me. We could, you've mentioned it loads of times on your channel. That when the first comment is, I've looked on eBay and you just think, oh, I'm going to walk off because I know yeah, what's see coming. See you later. Yeah. Bye. <laughs> Bye. Good luck. Good luck. Yeah. You know, and uh, and it's not just us. You know, It's not just us retro collectors. I, you know, I say I speak to a lot of toy collectors. and it, it's, it's just different genres. It's just different facets of whatever you're doing yeah. and uh people that think they're standing in the middle of a you know in, in a sort of slightly damp field at six o'clock in the morning think that they're they're selling to a worldwide audience and you're not no no it, it, but, uh, you know everyone you know 
God, God loves a try, don't they? So they say. And I'm sure there's some people that would <laughs> would pay it who don't know it. But I think the thing I always think, mm. well, if you think you can get that, why don't you put it on eBay then and get the money that you think it's worth? No, because it's this, it's they think there's some sort of like dad boy selling tactic, don't they? <laughs> oh yeah, on eBay, and, and they think some sort of go, is that how much is on eBay? Is it, is it ninety quid on eBay? But you can have it for forty five. Yeah, yeah, you know, like, yeah, but it's not. <laughs> Yeah, and they don't factor in the whole ball like the the, the ass you got to go through to to sell because they don't probably sell on eBay themselves yeah. either. They're just looking at it on the phone, and it's and they're probably looking at like what someone's listing it for, yeah. not what it's sold. And you and you start to go down that route, and you think, Let's forget it. Yeah, you go you know, when when you start going to the car boots, you might do that the first handful of times, and then you realise, you know what, you just go okay, fine, and walk. It's better just to walk away. Yeah. Not even engage. Well, but I, I always think as well, because while you're, while you're trying to barter somebody who's got a... You miss you're something missing else. something like 50p yeah. over there. <laughs> exactly. Just say, okay, yeah. thanks, yeah. no thanks, and move on. I, I don't know if it's increased your fitness um, as well, because I've noticed, well, especially these last few years, like when they open the doors, it's like the 100-metre hurdles to get everywhere. <laughs> uh, so yours might be different. So the, the, the one that I mainly go to isn't like that. Oh, that's good. It's kind of like it's kind of like a. It, it, it's why I always liked it. I've, I've you know I've liked it for like well, I don't know how last 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 ten odd plus years. It's it's not as regimented, um, and I know some of them are like that. And I know a few lads up and down the country. It's somewhat like. You can't sell anything before this time. There's like a fucking ticker tape like the Grand National. You know, if, someone, if a horse bolts over the line, they blow the whistle and the foghorn goes, get back, get back. But it's not like that, right? It, it, it is quite relaxed. Um, you know, you, you're always going to get your lizards and your resellers and, and whatever, but that's part of the course. Um, I, I've literally seen somebody be exactly what you just said. They've gone through the line and they've literally uh, rugby tackled them to the ground to get them well, back. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, come on, man. He uh, can't. I don't know. But it's, see, this is the problem as well, I think, Dave, especially where in the last year, two years, more so. But, you know, if you go back maybe three or four years, like reselling has become a, a bit of a thing. But more so with the whole, you know, the, the, the corona thing and whatever, a lot more people sort of start looking at it as like, e- like easy money and stuff mm-hmm. like that. And they become quite like um, brutal about the whole thing and yeah. i don't know uh, you know maybe I've, I've had i've had my fill from the car boots perhaps so i'm less inclined to sort of be that way i, I definitely used to be more that way but because there was more re- there was more stuff that i wanted yeah, yeah. um so th- the fact that there's less stuff i want maybe I'm, I'm less inclined to be that way um but definitely more of the resellers, I think, generally and again across all swaves you know not just the retro gaming you got your toys your I don't know, gold, you know, see the mobile phones, yeah. vin- vinyls, you know, Lego, it, it's everything. Yeah. It, and de- they're, all, they're all of the same ilk. Yeah. They're all of the same <laughs> Excuse ilk. Me. Yeah, de- definitely. It's um, it's changed from years ago. It's, I think we're probably getting old. We just don't enjoy it as much. And it's cold at six o'clock in the morning as well, <laughs> normally. Mm. <laughs> Unless it's summertime, really hot summer. Oh, that's, oh, I mean, you know, I do miss... Because I used to go on my bike until my knee gave way, which I, I hope to get that fixed. And I should really get back on my bike to do it because it gives me a purpose to get back on my bike. But, you know, going down the country lanes at half five, six o'clock <laughs> in the morning, it is quite nice, like as you sort of say. But when it gets towards either the beginning, like as in sort of now, March time, and at the end... When it's, no, that, that's not fun. That's not fun at no. all. But in, in, the, in the summertime, <laughs> oh, it's beautiful. Yeah, you know, especially if you've got a bag full of nice stuff on on your back as well. But yeah, ah, you know, we we always like look for things of rose tinted glasses, don't we? <laughs> well, we I used to do the odd car boot with, with my mum. I used to take her, and I always remember a local one. We used to get there for like four to get the best pictures, if you like. And yeah. while we were setting up, they were turfy put clubs out, so you'd always get the drunks coming round saying, "Oh, that's yeah. all right." And yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that that was an experience, I tell you. <laughs> yeah. So, so, sort of moving away from the booty though. What what mm. got what was got you into gaming? What's your first memory of gaming, if you like? Oh God. My first sort of proper. I remember there was a lad. He was my brother's friend, but he he was older than my brother as well. So he was like probably four or five years older than me. His name was Dave. 
and his nan, he lived um, a block or two away, like you know, not like American block. But you know what blocks? Yeah, yeah. Like where we grew up, like you know, around the block. He lived a block or two away from us, not like miles away, but enough as when you were like, I think I was not like, maybe eight, seven or eight, maybe ish. But his nan lived on our block, so there was like, like a little green we used to play football on. We always just play football. And, and Dave would, uh, would come and play football with us because he, he, I think he spent the weekends or whatever uh, uh, with his nan. But he, I remember the first time I seen it, and uh, actually the first time I've seen Sabutio and a ZX Spectrum was at his nan's house. So obviously that was his stuff. He had an older brother as well. Um, but that's the first time I remember seeing a, a ZX Spectrum. Didn't get to play it, just, just sort of saw it. The first time I actually played an 8 bit machine was. Um, at a friend's party, and it was his older brother. So my friend was called Barry. His older brother was called, um, I think it was Steve, I think. But he had a Commodore 64, and he had Commando. All right. And he actually let... So he's an older kid, and he let Barry's party friends play play the game as a sort of gesture thing. So that was one of my earliest memories of of actually playing um, game and stuff. But... That wasn't the earliest system I remember playing because then later on, maybe about a year or two later, um, uh, at primary school, who became a really good friend of mine, John. I always mem- always mentioned John. Where, um, obviously, we used to go out on bikes, play football, you know, action figures, all that kind of stuff. And I, I distinctly remember this, and he doesn't remember it, John doesn't remember this, but I, his dad... Uh, Terry went in, went into, into his stairs and he pulled out. He must have been his at the time, his dad's, the, uh, the Atari Twenty Six Hundred, and he had like Space Invaders and stuff like that. And that was the first time I actually remember sitting down and actually playing a console yeah. properly, rather than sort of like eyeballing it, partic- yeah. participating like you know from a, a voyest- voyestic uh, perspective, and playing the Twenty Six Hundred. And me and John, unbeknownst to his dad, were like fucking obsessed with this thing and i think it was a year later it must have been a year or two later his dad actually bought him a spectrum plus three and that's where it exploded so i i sort of um vicariously lived out my gaming life via john because he was a single kid you know um and he got he wasn't spoiled in that respect but he got everything you know near and near as damn it so a lot of the experiences i had as, as, as a child were vicariously lived out via john um and the only other weird and not there's a couple of anomalies, you know, when you're that young, you always have different groups of friends you, you, you dip and um, uh, mix between. Um, and there was one, one, one chap, one chap, one lad, I went to his party. I obviously played football with him at school, you know, later on as well and stuff. But he was the only person I knew who had an Amstrad CPC 464. <laughs> and here, yeah, the, but this is back in the day when birthday parties were at people's houses, yeah, not yeah. in like, you know, like bloody soft play <laughs> areas and, and stuff like yeah. that. And he had a, 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 an Amstrad um, CPC 464 and he had handball Maradona. <laughs> so it, it, it must have been in and around Mexico 86. Yeah. That's how long ago that was. And I, I remember that. But again, you, 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 know, you might not have even have, had, had a chance to have a go on it. You just stood around watching <laughs> this green screen flicker. And it was awesome. Um, and there was another ch- another um, sort of friend of a friend. Um, again, we were like into the BMXing and all that kind of stuff. And he was into his Transformers and, and all that kind of whatever. But his older brother had a Commodore 64. I remember playing Kickstart. He let us play Kickstart on it. And that was like a thing like, oh my God, Kickstart is freaking awesome. <laughs> that's the only other game we played on, on the on the Commodore 64 was Kickstart. Classic game about like Kickstart. Say, all those years, they're, they're kind of, I couldn't timeline them because I think a lot of them intertwine and they sort of backtrack on each other. Yeah. But um, let's say the distinct memory really was the, 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 the 2600 from under the stairs at John's house. With Space Invaders and, and another, I can't remember what else. My, Centipede was one that stood out as well. So I love Centipede even to this day. Um, and then after that, it was the Spectrum. And then from the Spectrum, he went to like the Master System, the Mega. Yeah, not so much the Mega Drive. Then it was uh, the, the Super Nintendo. But weirdly, with John, it went back to the NES because Turtles came out in the NES. Yeah, yeah. And we were uh, at this point. Then we were going on. Ho- I was going on holiday with him to Skegness, and then it, 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 the whole arcade. Sort of sphere started embroiling it all, and it was like, oh my! And we got to the point where 
we used to go to like different chip shops just to play <laughs> arcade machines. I remember we went to one not too far from us that had Renegade. Yeah. Just to play the game, we didn't buy anything. I think I think his dad might have bought a bag of chips just to appease. They got we were, we were pumping ten peas into uh, to Renegade in the chip shop. Chip, chip. Do you know it's funny you mentioned chip shops because I I interviewed uh, I don't know if you watch the Grumpy Retro Gamers and um, the youngest one I think it's Chris. He couldn't believe that arcades used to be in chip shops. He says, "Get away!" Yeah, and the no, chippers, yeah, and bandits. Where, yeah, bandits. Yeah, that's and right. the bandits. Yeah, that's where you used to see them if you didn't have an arcade around you. It was in a chippy. Everybody gets yeah. a chippy. I mean, to be honest, when as I got a bit old, like as I say, older, um, it's hard to timeline some things because I think you end up. I wouldn't sort of say like having that Mandela effect where you think things happen that didn't really happen, but. <laughs> <laughs> Certain things kind of cloud your judgment, and you and you, you, you think some you experience. Maybe you read it in the magazine, and you try and like, and then lines start to yeah. blur. Yeah. Um, but it, again, maybe when I was like 13, 12, 13, there were there were a couple of arcades because I'm from Coventry, and there were a couple of arcades down in Gloucester Street, and one in in in, uh, in the actual city centre. And I remember seeing uh, Art of Fighting for the first time in, in one of them. Uh, Killer Instinct was the one in town, you know, and stuff. So there's, li- there's little bits outside from the seaside in yeah. terms of like, you know, arcades. But yeah, they weren't, they were. See, a lot of people have the, uh, especially I think the previous generation have these things like uh, the arcades, like they're, they're dim, they're, they're dark, and they're full of smoke and they're all dodgy. Yeah, yeah. I didn't really get, I, I think that might have been waning when I started to go to those those particular two. They weren't, wasn't quite that way. Yeah. Um, but um, yeah, especially going back to Skagness, though, there were there were quite a lot of nice older arcades. Yeah, it, yeah, they weren't just all the. I mean, you go to them now; they're just penny pushers and yeah, redemption fruit machines. machines. Such a shame. <laughs> yeah, the fruit machines. Yeah, gamblers. Yeah, yeah. It, it's funny because I saw Daytona for the first time at Skagness at Eastgate Market. You know, Eastgate Market arcade. Mm-hmm. That was the first time yeah. I ever saw Daytona, and I was got, I was just blown away with it. See, I yeah. remember. He, so I don't know when you first went or where, where, or where you see that, but I remember Eastgate Market before it was Fantasy Island. It was. I remember it when it was just a market and it was it was dirt floors <laughs> and there was a little there was a little uh, block like a, a little sort of central block and in there there was, there was a little arcade and in there they had Mario. They had and that was the first time me and John played Double Dragon Two, and it took us, God knows how many ten piece to work out. That you punch one way and you punch the other with a different button. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> and stuff like that. And it was a tiny little arcade. And uh, like my, my friend Rob Fob, um, obviously he's he, he's he, you know he's been to uh, Skegos quite a lot. He's got a caravan not too far from it. And I, I when we been over there once or twice, I sort of said to him, "Danny is that used to be the arcade, and up here used to be this arcade." Because I do you remember this because that's that that was <laughs> what I grew up with for like ten years. Yeah. Skagness was the was a, the, the epicenter of arcades for me, and I could pinpoint, I could tell you <laughs> exactly which ar, which arcade and what machine. Yeah, because that's how me and John used to sort of say, oh, you know, when we we're younger, and his dad would sort of say, right, where, where do you want to go tonight? Then we'll go, oh, we'll go down here because we've got this machine, and go up here because we've got that that those machines. Um, and in Skagness was the first time. And I don't think I've seen it anywhere else, not at any, not at any um, um, shows or anything. Where I first saw the Super Nintendo, but it was um, like a kiosk, the arcade kiosk. All right, yeah. And it was in the American colours, you know, the violet colours. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I remember playing Super Mario and um, Pilot Wings on that machine, and we thought it was it was an arcade machine, but it wasn't. It was basically <laughs> just a Super Nintendo kiosk that you put money in to, to play the games. That, that sounded like that arcade owner had that right idea, getting one of them in and sticking a coin yeah. slot on it. <laughs> Well, no, I think it was a thing. I just think it, it was. Na- it, it wasn't like a, a botch together. It was an actual thing. Was it like a play like choice? Though? Unit. I mean, it was a bit like the yeah, Nintendo like a play, play choice. Yeah. Choice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, exactly like a play choice, but it was the SNES version. Oh, but it, it was in the American color, the, the American colorways, the purples and stuff. The yeah. Purples are grey. So like a Famicom, more so than a. Is it super? I don't know. I no, get no, confused. no, Famicom. We, Famicom is what we had the colorways. The, the American snares was the purple and the violets. Oh right, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's what that's the days when every system from every area had different shapes and buttons and colours and <laughs> And probably the Super Nintendo was is probably the only time the UK got a good deal because we had literally the, the sort of um 
the version of the Super Famicom that is the far superior, nicer looking, aesthetically pleasing console. Yeah, yeah, it definitely looks better because I think the American oh, one's God, square, yeah. isn't it? It's more square. Oh, the American one's horrible. <laughs> I mean, it, it's we say it's horrible. I mean, probably now you look back on it with like most of the glass up, we do a lot of stuff, but <laughs> oh, God, at the time, yeah, it's awful. It, it, it's interesting when you look back at those days, you can't believe that a company would release a console and we wouldn't get it for like a year, a year and a half. Even the same with the games, a year oh. and a half later. It, it's crazy. Or not at all. Yeah, or, or not, not at, at all. all. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, I, I don't know how they did the market research and, and stuff like that. So I think they didn't really value Europe. Yeah, yeah. That's how I always looked at it. Um, and what Sega did very well compared to Nintendo, they tapped into that. Yeah. Maybe they just sort of seen it as a, a, a sort of potential market, not really knowing. But I, I, again, I'm I'm pretty sure you know Dave as well. For me, like lo, nearly everybody had, had a. This is weird because I sort of say this: everyone had a, <laughs> had a, had a, a mass system. But then you speak to other people like down south, yeah. the rich lot down. <laughs> it's all Nintendo, but where the Midlands and stuff like it was all it was all yeah. mass system. It was yeah. all mass system. Yeah. Sega. Mass and dominated everything. Yeah. Well, I used to work. The, game, in... the games were slightly cheaper as well. The consoles were slightly cheaper. Yeah. Yeah. It, it, I used to work in a game shop and we used to have a, a whole shelf of Master System games and we probably had about 10 NES games because they just yeah. didn't sell up, up north. They didn't sell, no. Because, so. they were, they were, uh, uh, you know, what. Well, <sighs> There was a shop in, in, in Coventry, there was a couple of shops in Coventry, but the, the, one of the main ones, I always have these like. I've never mentioned it before. I mentioned it now. It's called Hamilton News. It still exists, but it, it's not where it used to be. Yeah. Um, and in there, they had like you know the, the tall spindle racks that you spin round, yeah. <laughs> yeah. and they were on. Pe- that's where like the old um, hang tabs and stuff. Yeah, and they had the games out the back. And um, a friend of mine, uh, you know, a, a, a good friend of mine, it sadly he's passed away now. But he had a paper round. But he, he, he was he was very lucky. He had a lucrative paper round <laughs> with direct with the country Telegraph. So a lot of people had. Well, I had a paper round, but it was with the news agents. Yeah. When you had a, a a paper round with the Telegraph, you got more money because they were dealing with you direct. So he was he had a lucrative paper round, and obviously, <laughs> you know, every I think he got, I think he actually got sort of paid monthly. So he had like a, a, a quite a lump sum, but he could go and buy a mass system game a month. Oh, that's and it was this like whole journey <laughs> to go up to Hamilton News to look at the mass system games, what to buy. That's crazy. That's because I thought paper rounds were like you got a penny a newspaper or whatever it was in them hmm. days. I, I know my friend used to do it, um, and he used to have to go like miles to the middle of nowhere just to deliver one newspaper. <laughs> yeah, so I, I I I had a sort of paper round, but it was um, say with the news agents, and I don't know what I don't know what it, it was like seven quid a week. I don't know what it was. It's something stupid, right? But it, it basically, I just bought all the all my all my money went on magazines with that same shop. <laughs> um, but my mate Darren, he he had, and I don't know how it was. And I remember looking at it years later, and you, you could actually get so. In, I say from Coventry, the Coventry Telegraph. People would um, subscribe to the Coventry Telegraph direct for a delivery oh, yeah. rather than via a news agent. So what they were doing they were cutting out the middleman. So that middleman cut out, they were giving back to the. The people that are delivering the papers, yeah. So they got a bit oh, yeah, of money. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He, he'd collect all the money, and it was like it was a lot of money. And then the person would come around for the Telegraph, and they'd, they'd divvy it all up, and he'd, he'd have his pot of money at the end of the month. Sounds like you're onto a winner. I don't know. <laughs> well, for a kid, yeah. I used to go walk around an album because we used to just talk games all the time, you know. I have good memories of the Master System, but I, I remember the Master System boxes really well. With the, the like, it always reminded me. I don't know at school we used to have like this paper that was clear paper that you peeled off, and on the back it had like white paper with the squares on, and it because obviously the the Master System boxes are like white with like the grid, the, the grid yeah. yeah. And I've got I remember them right well the the Master System boxes. Mm. What, what is what um is that your favourite system or is that? Have you got another no, one? No, no, no. It, 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 it's got dear memories for me. I think if I've said this before, if someone said to me, "You had one system, with, like all the games, you know, even regional or or across all three regions, US, uh, Europe, and and Japan," it, it'd be the Super Super Nintendo, Super Famicom, yeah, because that that was really 
for me that the sort of catalyst for where gaming really took off, you know, like, I mean, massively, like the leaps between, you know, people talk about like <clears throat> you know, the Xbox shoe box X now compared to the Xbox. There's not a great deal. Yeah, I mean, and I don't think there ever will be. I think the human eye can only see so much detail and then yeah. everything else is lost after that anyway. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> maybe the immersion aspect will then come into it, the VR kind of thing. But I think the leaps, you know, we, we I always say to a lot of people, we, the older people, we were quite <laughs> privileged because we lived in probably the golden era, the mm. golden age, sorry, the golden age of gaming. People lived in the golden era, like the eight, 80s. See, I'm 76, so I don't, so this was someone else. I don't class, I'm not a 70s kid, I'm an 80s kid. I thought so you meant I'm, you were 76 then. I was thinking that you were no, no, good no, for 76. 76. <laughs> yeah. No, well, yeah. <laughs> Um, vampire. Um, so I'm really an 80s kid. Yeah. You know, any, anyone who's born in like 87, they're not an 80s kid. They're a 90s kid because they don't know anything. You know, and you've got to. That's how I look at it anyway. Yeah. Um, but I think that era that we that we live through and the the, the advancement and the changes and ah oh, the games that we experience in that that you, you're not going to recapture that again. I don't think anyway. I don't think. The only way you're going to do something similar is with the VR side of it. Yeah, that's what that's Perhaps. what everybody said that I've who I've spoken to. The, the VR bit is probably the nearest you're going to get to that thrill of something coming that, out. That with, leap, yeah, that yeah. big difference. Because yeah. we we were born in a time when there was it went from nothing, obviously, up to the 32 bit. So you saw every leap as it came along. You look, yeah, at, we see, we, yeah, bleats and blops and queefs and farts it, to it, sort of like. 3D graphics and yeah and stuff like that. You know, at the time, 3D graphics looked quite nice, ish. Yeah. You know, I must I wasn't really sold on it until Ridge Racer. Yeah, on the PlayStation. Yeah, I was like, yeah, that's quite. I, I like that. Um, but and then when it got to sort of like the three six again, I think it's. I'm just not dexterous enough. That, there's too many buttons, too many. <laughs> and like, my head, I, I couldn't. I'm like, no, I just want to. Yeah. I just want to keep it simple. There's, there's too much shit going on here now. This is not enjoyable. This, this is more like fucking work trying to work this out. Yeah, you de definitely. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> it's like I like playing wrestling games now and again, but I'll only play it on Mega Drive or SNES because it comes to a point where there's only so many buttons and combinations you can actually remember. Yeah, and it's like I know it's, it's all about learning, but it's got to be enjoyable, isn't it? You yeah. know. That's what a lot. That's what I think. That's why some people always hark back to the arcades. The most you ever had was six buttons. Yeah, you yeah. knew what's it, but less than that, it was usually one or two buttons or three buttons. You know, and uh, there's some intrinsically easy to pick up and play and enjoy about them kind of games, rather than now where you've got to sit down, you know, and and try and work out what you got to do, and what, what what does that do again, and yeah. I mean, I've, nah, forget about that. But, what, That's just too much like hard work. Exactly. When you come from playing sensible soccer to play the modern FIFA, yeah. the amount well, I'll take it off too. I won't <laughs> say off too. Well, uh, the amount of times when I've tried to play it and I've been in front of the net pressing the shoot that I suddenly do some random chip over somewhere or whatever <laughs> because you yeah. forgot what, it just gets annoying after a while. And I get the younger generation obviously there, they can pick it up a lot quicker than I can. I'm getting old now, but yeah, I think um you like you say it, gaming's definitely going down the route of even the systems now because they're that close and that similar the, the the way they're selling them is through which who's got the best offering on the play store or the game store that seems yeah, to be where it, they're it's, going it's exclusives isn't it as well that's yeah. what it is it, it's it, it's trying to bag i mean to be honest it was it, a little bit it was it was about exclusives you know nintendo were, were quite savvy quite brutal back in the day in, in terms of their sort of um, you know, their Nintendo seal of quality, which we looked at is like, oh, yeah, they're looking after us. But really, what they're saying is, no other fucker's going to put uh, yeah. <laughs> release this game or anywhere, anything else. Yeah. Uh, and if it is shit, we, we won't release it either. So, it, you know, when you look back at how Nintendo were with an adult's eye, yeah, as compared to a kid's, they were quite savvy, but they were quite brutal. Um, you know, and Again, like we said, we said earlier, it, it boggles the mind why some games were never released over it. I'd... 
it, I, don't, I don't know what their market research was doing. I have no idea. I, I, I still think they didn't value Europe. Um, I think that's that's changed over the years more so. Um, but Yeah, definitely, yeah. because it, it was... Uh... It's like you say, some games didn't even get released. And it's like so even some of the consoles, some of the decent consoles didn't even come over here. No. Or, or you could no. get them on import. But you think yeah. you're missing... From a business perspective, you're missing a whole market. It's like not... It's like releasing a game on Steam and not saying you can't download it in the UK. It's insane. Yeah, yeah I think, you know, back then the world was 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 a bigger place, maybe. Um, but if you think back, like... And some people will argue, oh, the PC Engine was released in Europe. It was a it was a hacked Turbo Graphics, whatever. If 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 Hudson had really made a fist of it, they would have they would have smashed it here. They would have smashed it. Yeah, uh, it's funny because I was talking to somebody yesterday, and we were, talk- were talking about the Sharp X six eight hundred, is it or six eight? Oh, six eight hundred. Yeah, and, and that was out at the same time as the Amiga. If that came out over here, it would have annihilated the Amiga because it was a totally. It was almost like playing arcade perfect games mm. on the system. But the only thing it wasn't it five and a quarter discs. I'm not it, it, sure. It wasn't, well, they were old. The old school five and a quarter floppies, yeah. not the three and a half inch. I think so. Yeah, it's something. Like I think that that that, that I think that will, has and probably would be its downfall. The floppies. Um, yeah, because I think, like you say, as things move on, because that would be like the old IBM. I mean, you know, I'm, I've been in the IT game now since 1994, since I left school. Um, so I actually do remember old two eight sixes and stuff like that, and old IBMs. <laughs> funny enough, from work. Yeah. Um, and it was like, no, we need to move away from that. It, it's it's defunct. <laughs> so I think if you looked then to try and implement that into that market, I think it would yeah. it would probably look it would be frowned upon as in like, what? We've got three and a half inch flop because yeah. they were literally floppy. That's where the the term comes from. It's the actual cylinder inside that's floppy. Yeah, yeah. Even the three and a half inch floppy disk. Even it's hard case inside, it's still it's, floppy. It's, yeah, it's still floppy. Yeah, yeah. But they were looked at as superior. Yeah. You know, and, I, yeah, the Sharp sixty X sixty eight hundred, amazing machine, absolutely amazing machine. Some of the gate, I, I did a stream where, well, obviously it was an emulation. I were playing the gate, and I couldn't believe how good they were. Because I was thinking, if, if I'd have got this back in the day, I'd have been well in, well impressed. Yeah, I mean, I don't know what the costs were back when it was released, um, but now. Yeah, uh, unless you've won the lottery. I know a few people, I know, I know a couple of people that were very lucky to acquire a, a quite a substantial library back in the day. And uh, again, I don't know what they paid from back then, but phew, now, you know, I mean, like you say, the arcade conversion, Splatterhouse is a standout one. Uh, there's a lot of the arcade shooters that are absolutely like perfect near, near as damn it. Yeah. <laughs> So you mentioned that you you were in IT gaming. So you used to work on PCs. We like I, I was talking again to somebody else about how my first PC was a four eight six SX twenty five, and I can remember trying to get games to run by editing the auto exit back and config system, not load yeah. mouse drivers and that's it, yeah, the quem and all that stuff. Yeah, <laughs> so yeah, did yeah, you yeah. do that as well? <laughs> yeah. So I mean, I was I I worked on deck two eight sixes. So. Um, the old deck machines were built. I mean, again, like anything back in the day, they were they were built solidly, like literally, like fucking tanks. It, they were, it was two layered. You had the outer skin that you peeled off, and then it was like a me- metallic shield inside. You had to take that out as, again. There's no cooling. It was all it was all literally just like fins, yeah. fin cooled. There's no air cooling at all in in the, in the machines. But they were a bit like tanks, yeah. But so back in the day, it, it, it was all DOS based. Yeah. You know, not until Windows 3.1 came out where we had some, any sort of GUI. And again, I know it's not gaming, but it's quite, it's, it, was, it was quite amuses me now. But some of the older women who used to be like in accounts, who used to use Lotus 123 as, as the spreadsheet in DOS version, <laughs> not in the GUI. And then when we, we went to three point one. They, they were trying to like pick the mouse up and, and like hold it and, and float it around like this, and then it's trying to make them understand that the mouse pad isn't the limit of the mouse. Yeah. You just pick up and move it. Oh, it is. You know, back then it was it was just different times, different times. And again, I'm not sure if anyone cares or is interested. Um, 
but I remember pre Microsoft. So we were we were what we call Noval. We we used to Noval, run an, yeah. uh, Noval system. So Noval three point one. Uh, before then, and um, yeah, it, 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 it was good times. Microsoft actually ripped off Noval with Microsoft <laughs> NTF, NTFS. It, it was a blatant rip off, but that's by the by. I think Microsoft probably ripped off a lot of companies and just put it into yeah. their own thing. 100%. 100%. They just changed the name of everything. <laughs> Trust me, I was there. I was there at the time because Windows NT, new technology, wasn't, wasn't working and no one was interested in it. I think it's 4.5, I think. They started to get some traction, but before that, it was Noval Netware. Noval Netware 3.1, uh, 3.11. Good old days, that. That's going back to me. Show you your age now. You really are showing your oh, age. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know. They were good memories for me. I, I did. Uh, obviously, I was I was an Amiga person, and I, came, I went from the Amiga to the oh, PC. The Amiga. Oh, oh. Uh, <laughs> the Amiga is my is my all time favorite mm. computer. If if I had to pick one, that's the one I would pick. Just because I think, like you say, some rose tinted spectacles again, and that was the time I remember the most. No, I think with the Amiga, the Amiga is different. So again, I've, I've I've told this story a few times on my channel, <clears throat> but I I had a, a Super Nintendo, and I actually paid and, and bought all all the games I had. Um, so I used to have a Saturday job working in my dad's butchers, like just cleaning up doing your jobs and uh i remember pre-ordering final fantasy 3 from the from america based on a super play review and uh i played zelda link to the past stuff like that i was actually gagging for this game it cost me 90 quid back then oh, flipping heck. <laughs> oh yeah yeah it wasn't it wasn't cheap i remember it, it it cost me what what happened was it cost me i think three or four weeks worth of wages but the lad who was a little bit older than me lent me the money to buy it up front and I paid him back. Um, but God, I, I, I love that game. And the the killer was I, I could never, I could complete it, but I couldn't watch the end credits because the adapter I had, there was a malfunction with it. I can't remember what it was called. Um, you had to have a certain adapter, which I found out later on. Um, but it got to the point, I think, um, I can't remember what year it was. But uh, there's a game that came out in the Amiga. My mate John had it, and I was like, oh, God, I want that. <laughs> so I ended up putting in my Super Nintendo bundle into um, the classifieds. Remember the classifieds? Oh, God, yeah. In the, in the local papers. The classified, <laughs> yeah. Looking to trade for an Amiga, yeah. and some guy contacted me, and I, and I swapped all my Super Nintendo and my magazines, my Super Play magazines, and all my, game, my games were like, looked after them even back then. Um, for this Amiga, and I loved Amiga because I, but then again, I could get all the games copied from my mate John, yeah. you know, and that kind of stuff. So I had a lot of, a huge nostalgia wrapped up in Amiga. But one of the biggest regrets was probably doing that in <laughs> hindsight. Looking um, back, looking back, yeah, and it's like, oh, man, I've got a lot of the games back now that I had anyway, but it's like they're not my original ones. <laughs> but the Amiga, I mean, God, I remember going to, um, at our school, because John was a year younger than me, at our local uh, comprehensive, they had like a, an Amiga club. And it wasn't really Amiga club. <laughs> it was just basically a ruse <laughs> for everyone to turn up and copy games yeah. and swap stuff. Um, I bet X-Copy got some hammering that night. X-Copy, X-Copy <laughs> 3. Oh, yeah, you know. Yeah, you, you, exactly. Um, and I remember John's dad got talking to a guy called Roy. So Roy was the in. Right? Roy was the in. And... Um, Got chatting to this guy called Roy, and John, John's dad loved. He he, he still does. I seen well before COVID. Every now and then, he he always liked the thought that I got into computers. Um, he always wanted John to get into computers. <laughs> and um, obviously, so when the, the the Amiga come out, it was a computer, and John had the printer. He had the the, the Philips CM. 683 monitor, I can't remember what it's called now. Oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, oh, oh my God, you go from the spectrum to that, it was like <laughs> fucking my. I remember the, on Christmas Day, because I, like I say, I vicariously lived through John. I'm like, yeah, open my sadly not very impressive presents <laughs> straight around John's house, see what he got for Christmas. Backpack. Oh, God. <laughs> oh, God. You know, oh, God. New Zealand story. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you know, your fucking mind's blown, man. Um, 
it was just so impressive. Deep paint three, you know, pissing about on that. Oh my god, the memories. So I have got huge nostalgia tied up into the Amiga from that aspect. Um, but yeah, uh, John's dad, like I say, got talking to this guy Roy at the, at the computer club, and John had always built up a substantial boxed collection because every week his dad would buy him a game. Yeah. We'd go uptown, you buy him a game, you know, we'd, we'd go something to eat, blah, blah, and we'd, we'd come and we'd just hammer the game. Um, and what Roy did, uh, thinking back, I mean, if Roy's still about now, he must have the most awesome Amiga collection ever because he would basically say, like, for one of your originals, I'll give you three copied discs. <laughs> right. But they'd all have games on them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'd, 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 I was always about RPGs, adventures, and stuff like that. And if you remember all the point and click games, yeah. Monkey Island, they're like fucking 10 discs. Yeah, 12 so discs. It, it would cost John like three original games, and he'd be like, ah, oh. <laughs> and I'd be like, oh, oh, oh. Yeah. you know, and it, it was like, oh. and then obviously it got to the point where John had traded all his originals in. And then it was, I think it was like, I think it then charged him some like either two pounds or three pounds for, um, a disc, as in like, here's a disc, give me three pound, or it was like a pound to copy the game. It was something weird like that. Yeah. So you kind of had to juggle, and it, it, it like John would always uh, have a meager action. I mean, I know a lot of people f- from a magazine perspective don't don't really value a meager action from a, a meager perspective, but from a, I think from a, a popcorn um, a magazine, yeah, you know, that, that, that give you the reviews and what uh, the games are like, that was a go-to one. I mean, I've got fond memories of meager action. Yeah. So you'd look through that and sort of see what was up and coming and see what Roy had got. Have, Roy, have you got, has Roy got this game? Roy, have you got this game? You know, and he'd be like, <laughs> oh. It yeah. sounds like he was doing deal or no deal with games. <laughs> Three of your oh, originals. It, 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 it was just a different time. It was a different time back then. I remember Amiga Action. I always got vivid memories of the Zool cover on Amiga Action where he was on the front doing the kick. On yeah. The, the thing. Yeah. Because they always did like, their own, they always did their own like weird, quirky. I say it wasn't CGI, but their own sort of 3D interpretations yeah. of stuff. It wasn't art. It was like, and I think that's what pissed a lot of people off about it. <laughs> but as a kid, as a younger kid, because it was glossy, it wasn't too heavily um, wordy. I suppose that's probably the best word. Like I say, it was like a popcorn thing, but it it, it, it encapsulated a lot of the games of the time. Yeah, definitely. It, it's. It's a time that I think, like you said before, is is not going to be relived again, especially with the magazine no, never. side of things. Because never, you're never going to get that back again. It, it was kids, just... kids nowadays are not interested in that. Well, they want everything here and now, straight away, instantaneous, and obviously yeah. to wait a month for the next demo disc to come out, it didn't be quite <laughs> shocking for a yeah. man, I would imagine. No, but... it's a shame. I mean, I've got, I've got like you know the weird, weird memories because let's just talk about. Uh, John and stuff. Well, I'm not sure if I mentioned this, but when the um, the superintendent, when he first got his superintendent, I I got mine probably about nine months after, I think. But John had had his superintendent, and his dad in the in the in the classifieds had seen this ad, so we're in Coventry, and I'm sure it was what we call what we were, us in Coventry were called the posh house. I think it was Stratford or Warwick way. And someone was selling import games, and um, and it was uh, the WrestleMania, the first the, the first WrestleMania game. Yeah, and we thought it was like going to be like the arcades because you didn't know because it, 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 there's nothing in the magazines, and these this, these people had WrestleMania with an adapter. Whilst it, there was another game we had, and I can't think what it was, but anyway, long and short of it is, we went over to this posh. Quiet, cool, just like leafy suburb in Warwick. When in, and it was two old, two older than us, but younger guys. They were like probably like twenty five then. Um, I mean, I remember we went into that this this back room, and he had computers running code. That's all I could see on the screens, like code. It, it was it was like fucking NASA to, to me and John. We're like, what the? Fuck? And I remember the, that they showed us um, WWF um, WrestleMania with the Undertaker running across, you know, like the sort of CGI Undertaker. And 
John's dad bought the adapter and WrestleMania. There was some of the there was one or two of the games that he showed. I can't recall what they were, but it, we were all about wrestling back then. You know, the Undertaker yeah. and fucking Hulk Hogan, and it was the, <laughs> that first WrestleMania game. And he must have paid a, I bet he paid hundred quid for the, for the the game and the, and the adapter. It is a good game though. The the WrestleMania on the on the snares. It's the the the, the thing is, I, I were always disappointed with the Amiga with the wrestling games because they were rubbish. Mm. <laughs> I remember I remember wanting that European Rampage, and when I got it, I thought, the, I'll what say the European hell is Rampage, this? Yeah. <laughs> Especially oh. when you played WrestleFest in the arcades as well. Well, that was it. Cause, <laughs> see, we were like we were arcades, so I remember uh, WF Superstars. Yeah. We remember I remember um what I call Free Count Bow. Yeah. Uh, which is Neo Geo one. And also um oh, what's it called? The uh, the finest hour. Yeah. Yeah, we we played all them. And then like I say, Wrestle I don't think WrestleFest had come out by then, but it was definitely WF Superstars. And when we sort of seen WrestleMania we thought, Oh my god, it's gonna be like that. <laughs> And it wasn't, and it was like, oh man! Do you remember? Do you remember the Konami wrestling game? What was in it? the arcades? Um, what was it called? Because I'm... Oh, it was kind of like um, very poor CG, but you had three buttons. You had a big button, a small button, and a medium button, and you had people like Haku and stuff like that. It do you ring, remember it? It rings a bell. I remember because now you say Haku, that rings a bell. Yeah, and they did this like weird, stupid turn where you just, like turn and kick and kick upwards. Oh yeah. And he, I, oh, I can't remember what it's right. called now. Oh, it, it, it escapes me. But they were kind of smallish sprite, but it was. Th- I'm sure it's three player. Yeah, I, I, I can remember. We, 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 we play that if we if if the arcades didn't have um, the finest hour or, or uh, WF Super- WF Superstars was awesome. Do you remember playing that? Yeah, yeah, Mac yeah. Man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, brilliant game. Because that that actually came out on the Amiga, didn't it? Superstars, WWF Superstars. Yeah, the first, that was the first one, weren't it? But it was it was the one where it was a bit like the Sega Mega Drive wrestling game where you like could oh, see no. part of the ring and it moved about. Oh, that was yeah. That's not not, the same, not the same one, game. is it? Yeah. No, not the same as the the the, the Technos one. I was going to say, there's no chance. Oh right? no, no, I because don't that, I don't think I ever got a home port. No, it didn't get. It didn't come out on on home systems, did it? I don't think. Which is a shame because it's the best wrestling game. Yeah, because what happened is with with I think with WF Superstars, that was like the name of an event, yeah, or a, a, a thing like WF Superstars would be on, like on telly like Wednesdays and Saturdays or something. Yeah. So they just use that name for a lot of different things. I, I never realised until recently that actually WWF started on ITV, but then they turned it down and they didn't want it, and that's when it went to Sky. Oh, really? Yeah, it used I'll to be on as part of that. Uh, you know, like they used to have Saturday afternoon wrestling with Big Daddy and stuff. Yeah, when, yeah. when it was coming to its end, they, they started having WWF, and it had a... Um, who was the guy? Was it Mean Gene Oakland, the bald guy with the moustache? Yeah, he he was on it for a, for like two episodes, but then they didn't they didn't buy it. So, um, which is interesting. I bet they wish they had it done now. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, mean, I the only time I remember well, we talk about wrestling is um, as a kid, <clears throat> we had something in Coventry called Coventry Cable TV. Um, that sounds dodgy. Yeah. Is that a real one or is it? A... <laughs> no, it's real. And literally, they had, I remember speaking to Shock Spark. Well, I'm not speaking to, like, like chatting to him about this thing. We had a box on top. We had like a little dial, and he had like 36 channels. And um, basically, within that, you could you could like obviously have certain movies or whatever this that and the other. But it was called Coventry Cable TV. I think it, later on it got bought out by a couple called NTL and stuff like that. But it, it was it was called Coventry Cable TV back then. I think shocks because he's up Nottingham way. They called it something different, but I think they were all pulling from the same satellites. <laughs> just re- rebranded it all, but that's where we first started watching American wrestling. That was where it was. That was that's where. It, but that, that's where it had the different regions within America, within the US, the different wrestling regions. Yeah, uh, I think it was like towards the end of the eighties, early nineties, where I think Vince McMahon. Bought up all the different regions and formed the WWF. Yeah, as much as he could. But yeah, I, I yeah I remember watching like WCW and stuff like that all the time. It, it's funny again that, that our generation remembers that so vividly. The wrestling side of things. I remember mm. um, 
one time I got really excited when Channel 4 got WrestleMania at night. I think they only ever had it once. And, oh, but, right. Because obviously you used to have to pay for it otherwise, didn't you, on like Sky pay-per-view? And, yeah, yeah, yeah. So. Or, yeah. Like, well, I'll say back before Sky, it was Contra Cable, and you, someone would pay for it, and some, they'd, they'd record it, so you'd have the tape. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And someone's recorded WrestleMania 3. We've got WrestleMania 3 on tape. <laughs> that was a big deal, man. That was a massive WrestleMania 4 on tape, you know. Because they recorded, because they paid for it from Compton Cable TV. Good times, good memories. Different times. <laughs> yeah, it's just how it is. You know, I mean, I couldn't watch wrestling now. It doesn't really interest me now. I, you know, no, I think it's... after after like mid nineties, mid to ish, like ninety six, ninety seven. Nah, it all. I, I lost interest after that. Yeah, I think it's got to. It's all sensationalism now, when it really close to the bone some of the stuff and I think you you're missing the point of wrestling. It's supposed to be like superheroes battling each other and that kind of stuff and it's gotta be I think it, 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 yeah, I mean look let's be honest, look, you can only like sell a you know I don't know, a, a calf as a as a as a as a as a pony so many times, can't you? And <laughs> people caught on to it. So for us it was like it was the first of its kind in that respect. So we all got sold on it, and, and you know, even I mean, I, I don't know when it's something like Father Christmas. When do you realise wrestling was fake? <laughs> you know, why is it fake? Well, no, but it, was it kayfab or whatever they call it? Um, is it kayfab, kayfabe, yeah. or whatever? I don't know. <laughs> but you know what I mean. Yeah. But yeah. after that, then that's when I think they had to make. Didn't they call it sports entertainment yeah, or something? Yeah, to yeah. Change it. Yeah. Um, so I don't know. You know, it, it's horses for courses. And look, if if young kids are still getting enjoyment out of it, fine. Yeah. But yeah, it, it, for as a, as me now, I couldn't sort of sit there and watch it and go, oh, yeah, she's great. I don't know. <laughs> I don't. Yeah. And do you think it's well? It's because we were brought up on like we say, Big Daddy just doing a belly flop, and then going on to American <laughs> wrestling, giant haystack. Yeah, they were all of a sudden doing like suplexes and drop kicks mm. and I think that's what brought, got us into the American wrestling. Oh yeah, 100%. I mean, yeah, I mean, God, if you looked at some of the the, the, the wrestlers back then, you know, um, not only the, the physicality of it all, but the characters. Yeah, yeah we had like, you know, like you say, Big Daddy, um, Giant Haystacks, um, what was the sumo, uh, the uh, uh, Kendo Nakasaki yeah, and stuff yeah. like that, you know, but the Americans just, they, they do what they do best and they just like glitz it and they, yeah. you know, and the whole story, because that's what the WWF was really about, Vince McMahon and his dad and stuff like that. They created a whole story that arcs around different characters Yeah, and you got involved in it, you know, and that, you know, and that's what made it great. It probably still makes it great for kids now. Don't get me wrong, but I think it's just a generational thing. Yeah, yeah. Probably it, like with some movies, you know, like movies now, you know, I'll, a lot of us will go like Clint Eastwood, man. Freaking, if I was to show my kids Clint Eastwood movies now, <laughs> they're turning us up to it. But if, I don't know who, I, I can't think of a current actor now. If they remade that same Clint Eastwood movie, yeah. they'd think it was the best thing ever. Yeah, yeah. Same with music. It's like, that's... <laughs> My song from when I was no, it's not. So they just nicked it. They just yeah. remixed it. It's the same fucking song. Put a drum beat to it. Yeah, whatever. I, I can't. There, there was a, some bloody song someone remixed. I said it's shit. Original was better. The kids will have a jar of it. It's the same difference. It's just we're just getting old, Dave. That's all it is. We're getting old. We, we've turned into as parents. That's what we've done. Yeah, we all do. That, that's that's life. That's that's the fucking circle of life, and unfortunately, it is turning to them's. It's funny because I, I, we, I was showing my daughter, she's 17, I was uh, showing her, we watched the Back to the Future trilogy because she'd never seen it, and I had to explain to her who Clint Eastwood was because obviously he pretends to be Clint Eastwood in the third one. Yeah. So it's funny you mentioned Clint Eastwood. Yeah, because it's like, it doesn't mean anything, does it? It's like, yeah. huh? Who? <laughs> huh? What? Who? Well, can I just say it's been a pleasure talking to you, Stuart, and thank you for taking the time, time, time out to do right. it. Um, sorry it's run over slightly, but no, I just kept rabbiting. Don't worry about that. 